this is day two, and today is about formatting data in Excel. So a big part of working with data isn't just about getting the numbers right. It's about helping people understand what those numbers mean. And that's where formatting comes in. So let me show you why. So let's say I'm running a store and I'm tracking my monthly performance. So here are the sales data in two different tables. Your eyes probably spent more time on this table. But why? That's because, first of all, you probably noticed that the values in the profit column are highlighted green. You probably also noticed that the sales and expenses values had the dollar currency. And maybe if you're eagle eyed, you probably noticed that these figures are actually aligned to the center. So without being told anything, your eyes are guided to certain parts of the spreadsheet. Let's, let's look at another pair of tables. If you were to compare these two tables, this time you would have probably noticed the table on the left. And this time it's because the formatting is actually not good. The header names and the values in the month field are not capitalized consistently. And some of these numbers have commas in it or thousand separators, but others don't. And there's no clear visual structure, meaning that everything's just blended together. And there's no color or emphasis to show what matters the most. If you've ever had to present data to someone, whether that's your manager or team or clients, you wanna make sure that everyone can follow what you're presenting. Because if your data is messy, then it's gonna be hard to read or easy to misinterpret. But if you format it correctly, then it helps make your message clear. Your insights become easier to understand. So when your data is aligned well and you're using styling correctly, then your audience spends less time guessing and more time learning what they need to learn or what they need to know. And you're also drawing attention to what matters. So you can use color, you can use bold text to highlight what matters most in the data, like green for profit or red for losses. So this helps your audience zero in on what they should take away from the data you present them faster. And you also build trust. So one thing you need to remember that it's not just about making things pretty. It's actually about making data easier for your audience to understand. And that's what great analysts do. So let's dive into a, a few examples. So let's format this data to make it easy for our audience to analyze. Let's, so let's imagine we're analyzing project spend and returns for five client campaigns. So this is the data before any formatting. So even though it's technically correct. There are a few problems that make it hard to analyze. So first of all, the client names are inconsistent. So some are caps and some are lowercase. And also the spend and return columns are not in any currency. So we don't know whether these are pounds or euros or yen or any other currency. So we're not too certain on that. And also the ROI column isn't shown as percentages and the status field is also inconsistent and the column widths are messy. So as you can see, some of these values are actually pouring into the other columns. If you see the client names and the status columns, so it's actually cutting off the text. So let's fix this step by step. So first, what I do is I copy this and actually paste it into another into another sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to standardize the client names. So that means I'm going to make sure that the first letter of each name is a capital letter and the other letters inside it are small letters. So I'm going to do this by using the proper function. So the proper function allows us to standardize each of the client names. It will capitalize the first letter of each month. So what I do is I'm going to show you again. I'm going to use the equal sign and then type in proper. And then I just select the cell with the name in it and then close that with a bracket and then hit enter. And as you can see, the first letter is capitalized and the letters after it are in lowercase. So if I just drag the fill handle, which is this tiny little square, green square at the bottom right of the cell. If I just drag that all the way to the bottom and then let go, as you can see, 
all the names are now standardized. And I'm just going to do control C, which will copy all of these names. And then I'm going to enter this cell here and then right click it. And then go to paste options and then click on values. And would you look at that? Now the names are all standardized. I've cleaned up the, the client names. So Tim, Jessica, Ryan, Sam, and Ashley are now showing the correct case. And actually, I can do the same thing with the status column. So if you notice, these are also inconsistent. So if I just go into this column, the next one, and just do proper, and then I just click on the first one, and then just close that with a bracket, and then hit enter. And then I do the same thing. I drag the fill handle down, and then I copy this, enter the first, um, the first approved value, and then just hit that, and then there we go. So we've pasted this in. So the client names and the status for each of the records have now been formatted correctly. So next, what we want to do is we want to convert these, or rather, we want to add currencies to each of these columns so that we know which currency we're dealing with. So you can actually select columns B and C and then go to the number section under the Home tab. And then if I just click the arrow down here, I get the option of choosing which currency I want to convert this to. So for now, I'm going to convert this to the US dollars. And as you can see, it's now just done that. If you want to try a shortcut, what you can do is I'm going to, so I'm going to undo this. And then I'm actually going to hit control shift and then dollar sign. And it actually adds a currency to each value in the spend and return column. But what you can do is, if you're not happy with the currency that's currently there, then you can actually right click this, go to format cells, and then you can also select the currency of your choice. So if I was to just scroll all the way to the bottom until I can find. So I'll just scroll and, cl and click on United States. And that will give us US dollar currency once again. Now all the spend and return values have the US dollar currency. So now let's convert the ROI column into percentage. So once again, highlight the column and then we're gonna click on the percentage sign right here. And if I just click that, everything turns to a percentage. And also if you, if you noticed, while I hovered over the percentage sign, you're gonna notice that it's showing us the shortcut to also doing the same thing. So I'm just gonna hit control shift and then percentage sign, all the ROI values now have a percentage sign. And that makes it easier for us to understand the ROI generated from the spend and the return. And also, if you noticed before, some of the text was actually cut off. So for instance, some of the client names you couldn't actually see, and some of the, the statuses were actually pouring into the next column. So if you actually want to auto fit that, what you can do is select all the columns or rather select select the entire data set and then hit alt h o i and that's going to auto fit all of the values automatically so that you can see all the values inside so now the table looks clean and spaced now let's also format the headers to make it stand out so all i need to do is just select all the header names and then click on bold right here or i can also hit control b and that will highlight all of the header names in bold. And then I can also add a border. So I'll add a border to the bottom so that it distinguishes the header names from the records. So what I'll do is I'll hit Alt HBA, and that's going to create borders around all of the headers. Now, if you don't like that one, you can undo that. Just go to this box here and then hit the drop down arrow. And then just select a border of your choice. So I'm going to hit bottom border and there you have it. Now the headers are easier to spot. Now let me take this to the next level. So let's call out any ROI that's below 10% in red because these are the weak performing projects. So let's select the ROI column or let's even select the values inside it, right? And then go to conditional formatting, then highlight cell rules and then go to less than. Now, 
we're going to mark this as 10%. So any values that are less than 10% will be filled with light red fill. And then click OK. So as you can see, one project is actually less than 10%. So this is a weak performing project. But let's also highlight the projects that are greater than 20%. For us, that's what we consider the strong performing projects. So once again, go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and then greater than this time. And then I'm just gonna add 20%. And then we're going to mark this in green. And then click OK. You can see that Tim's project is returning 25%. So the ROI is 20%. So this is a high performing project. So if I was to look away and then look back at it, my eyes gravitate towards the green and the red figures. And then I can pay more attention to these two. And then we can make a decision from that. So now the output looks better. So what I'm going to do is let me just name this after formatting example. And as you can see, if you compare it to the old table, this actually looks much better. I can actually get rid of this as well. So that's before and that's after. And that's how you format data in Excel. So if you want to actually practice more formatting in Excel, then check out the GitHub link in the description for a workbook you can try out. And what you want to do is you want to try to experiment with colors that guide attention and try to use different font styles as well to distinguish the headers from the actual records. Okay. And play around with number formats to make data easier to scan. So you can try different formats that you can find available here. You can try different styles, add thousand separators. So I challenge you to play around with it and then show somebody else your workbook and then see if they're able to actually understand your data very quickly. If they are, then there's a strong chance that you're actually formatting correctly. If they're not, have conversations with them. Tell them what's difficult for them to understand, what's confusing them about the data set, and then iterate and learn from it. Here are the key takeaways from this, right? So good formatting guides your audience, but bad formatting confuses them. If your spreadsheet makes it easy for someone to spot the key numbers and understand the message, then you've done it right. And that, everyone, is formatting with Excel.